Good morning, A Time. You know who it is. Your favorite cousin checking in. Young Jock Mo Quick and Shouty Shouty, man. All right, now, we always take it to the streets, and that's what we do, man. This morning, we have a very special guest, one of our very own, man. In the building, we have the evil genius himself, Gua. Gua, what up, homie? What's that? What's that, homie, man? Thank y'all for having me up here, bro. Hey, man, we appreciate you stopping through. Anytime. Those manners are immaculate. Oh, man, you know, manners are like the lubrication to any relationship. Well, you better <laughs> lubricate. Come on, Gucci. Yes. Well, we're going to make that a meme. I already got, I see the picture <laughs> for it already. Gucci going to be like this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Gucci, man, we know, you, we, we know you're moving around. You're doing big things. Been doing big things. Never really stopped. Um, the new album, Evil Genius. Yeah. Now, I'm just trying to figure out, like, you know, you have been considered a hood genius. Always figuring out a way to, uh, you know, rebrand yourself. Come with new hits every time you look up. Appreciate that. The evil part, the evil genius. Just, just give me a breakdown of that, please, sir. Um, it's kind of like, you kind. It's like by any means necessary, kind of. You know, I feel like sometimes you gotta step on some toes to get to the top. And I felt like that's what I did. You know, I, I did a lot of things that wasn't good. I did a lot of things that were considered probably bad. But you know, at the end of the day, it got me here. Mm. Wow, that's a great statement. So a lot of people speak about the old Gucci and the new Gucci. Yeah. Um, what do you, the new Gucci, think about the old Gucci? <laughs> what am, I'm the new Gucci. That's You're funny. the new Gucci. <laughs> um, I don't know. I feel like, you know, I matured a lot. I'm proud of the person that I am now. You know, when I was an upcoming rapper, I always, you know, kind of looked up to rappers that I never had met, like C Murder or BG or people who I, you know, a Pimp C. You know, guys, I feel like, man, they dope. You know, they talented. And I feel like for all the artists that look up to me, I want to be somebody that they proud of. Like, damn, Goo Up ain't never went out bad. Mm. Goo Up ain't got no cap in this round. He is successful, you know. You know, um, he inspiring people by not trying to preach to him. I can just look at him and say, man, I want to, I want to be like him. I, I want to stunt like him. I want to flex like him. I want to be successful like him. I want to, I want to be up front and just, you know, I want to, um, you know, I want to be a good businessman. I don't want to have nobody, you know. I want to help people. I don't want to put nobody on no messed up contract. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I want to be a, a blessing. Okay. That's, that's my whole career. That's beautiful. So. Okay. So, uh, of course, you know, we listen to the album. It's hard. Um, I we listen did. to, I listen to, a, a, I listen to the whole album and um, Evil Genius, that is. And I, I particularly, I like the record, the Bipolar with Quavo. I that's like my that. Favorite. That's my favorite one, too. I, Why? I think I feel like On God was hot, too. My Listen. This one, my best friend, go back from like elementary school, What's up, buddy? and he said his his favorite song on God. P, my best friend, say his favorite song on God. Like a lot of people love on God, so that's that. It's crazy that you said that. And even he was like, "Bro, I'm telling you, I'm an air. No, I told you on God." <laughs> so like now we leave here, gonna be like, see what I told you. Yeah, 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 yeah. But why do you like bipolar? Why is that your favorite? Just because, man, it it, it ain't even all about the song. It's just getting in the studio and, and uh, making a song somebody who. You was influential in their career, and they, you know it's like mm -hmm. to me. Like I say, it's um, it's just a moment in time. It was a moment, right. like cap capturing me and Quavo in that moment. You know, in the studio, just doing what we're doing. I'm just proud of that moment that we here doing that. So, so speaking of moments, if I can, I want to take this moment to just point out why that song stuck out to me so much. Because I I seen I seen Gucci, I seen Gucci Mane, I seen Guap, I seen these different transitions or phases of of uh this artist this brand this commodity over the years and at one point we was like you know you look at we look at each other like okay cool what's up then one point we we hang out then one point we have a rift like damn y'all beef like not really maybe it was just a song then we back cool and we've had these moments these transitional moments and even with you coming to do the interview today you know i was very like you know what i can't wait to talk to bro because i haven't i haven't talked to you yeah since it been it been some years. Been some years. So we've seen each other in past and it's always been cordial. What up? Go out. Doc, what up? Head and all right, cool, keep it moving. And it's one of those moments where people always ask me, so how you feel about it, bro? I always be like, Well, you know what? I think homie speaks from his heart. Whatever he going through at the moment, he say it. Yeah. Some people are, are passive in a sense where even if they feeling like something, they're not gonna let you know how they how they feel a hundred percent. It's gonna give you thirty percent. So you really can't gauge who they are. And I feel like with you, I'm happy that you came today because I'm like, you know what? We haven't spoke. And this, yeah. the, and I'm not going to use the word the new Gucci. I'm going to use the more mature Gucci, yeah. the more seasoned Gucci. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? I think it's going to be good because the last time we had a rift, of course, it, the, the world heard you, you know, you put in a song. 
I ain't trying to go broke like Jock did. Whatever, whatever. That 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 blew over. People was like, but I thought y'all was good. And and of course, when I found out the bottom of what manipulated that in a sense, you know, I was at peace with. It. I was like, well, you know what? If somebody telling you something that I might have wronged somebody that you rock with, then I probably would have took the same approach you took. You know what I'm saying? Not knowing the truth. Yeah. But with me knowing the truth, all I could do is shake my head and just say, you know what? We'll get past this. And next time I see him, we get a chance to talk. I would love to tell him I'm proud of you. One. Two, you're definitely an inspiration to the culture, bro. Keep going. Keep doing it. Keep dropping hits. Keep putting out some ass and doing what you do. And I'm just happy that, you know what I'm saying, you took the time to stop by and holler up this morning. Man, listen, I appreciate that, Jock. And, that, you know, I just, everything you said, I'm listening to it because even coming up here, I, you know, I, I told him, I'm like, damn, how this going to go? You know what I'm saying? Right. From what I said about Jock to coming up here and doing this interview, so I'm, I'm glad we got to this point, man, and we got, you know, this chunk in the past. Yeah, That's period, point blank. Man. So how, how do you um how do you feel about Walker trying to reconcile with you? Did you hear him I, like trying we, to reach we, out? We spoke one time after that. I reached out to him. You know. Aw. Yeah. How did it go? What did y'all talk about? You know, be honest. You know, him going on the internet like that, I reached out because I thought it was urgent. You know, I'm thinking it was something. Mm. I, you know, I'm like, let me reach out now because I want to know if you reaching out like that that publicly, let me call him. So we called and had that conversation. So you guys are cool. Cool yeah. again. We had a conversation. We we got every, everything in the past. You know. Okay. Right. Good job. Good job. You, you just bringing all this good energy in the room. Yeah, man. Ain't no need for it. Like, man, ain't no need. I really feel like if you ain't got nothing good to say, don't say it. Mm. You know, if you ain't in no good headspace, I had to learn that. If you ain't no good headspace, to, if you don't want to talk to nobody, you want to be bothered, man, you might need to stay at the house. <laughs> you might need for to real, stay bro, your butt at the house. If you come outside and you, you having a conversation with somebody, if you ain't going to be polite, you ain't going to be respectful, then you shouldn't talk to them. Wow. Do you think maybe um, marriage has put you in this? Like, how's Gucci as a married man? How do you feel? I feel like, you know, um, being married, my wife definitely has um, her spirit and her temperament is, is contagious. Like, she got a disposition that it just it affects everybody around her. And it definitely affected me for the better. Wow. You know, so Goodness. Salute her for that because, you know, she, you know she, she, took, she, she put up with a lot. You know what I'm saying? You know, because, like you said, I wasn't always this seasoned or refined, you know. I was kind of rough around the edges, but, you know, work in progress still. Still doing better, you know, but I'm proud of how far I didn't count. Wow. Yeah. So can I take you back um, to the last week of you being locked down? What was that week like for you, knowing that in one week it's about to be all Gucci everything? The week before I got there. What now? The week before you got out. The week before I got out. I thought you said the week before I went in. Oh, um, oh no. I the week take before I got out. Oh, man, I was so anxious. I didn't sleep. Um, couldn't wait to get out, you know, couldn't wait to see my wife, couldn't wait to eat real food, couldn't wait to have, you know, somewhere, some of my freedom back, you know, still trying to figure out like, how I'm going to focus, how I'm going to get out and not get back in trouble, not violate. So, I don't know, I think I was so focused. I, didn't, I was happy, but boy, I was focused. Mm. You know, even before I came out, like, I guarantee you I'm not coming. Wow. Now, I'm going to tell you something that's really crazy. A lot of people, you know, of course, everybody spe you know, speculates on what somebody's going to do in their progress and their transitioning and or whatnot. And everybody was like, man, you know, when they was hollering out the clone stuff. Yeah. And they, clone, clone, clone. And it's funny because, you know. <laughs> oh, Gucci, a clone. That's yeah, not the real Gucci. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, the funniest part of it was hearing people, you know, Create these predictions on what was gonna happen with Gucci. Oh, uh, he'll be he gonna be sober for three months. Then he gonna be right back to the old Gucci. Gonna be out here going crazy. And um, I ain't see that. I ain't see that. I'm like, no, I don't know. Son of to home spirit, cause home. Listen to it. Listen to the way he's talking. He's he's attentive. He's he's I, the word focus. I think you couldn't use a better word. And to see that focus, man. You know what? I'm gonna tell you this, and I, and I probably not, never said it to nobody else, but. It woke something up in me. You understand what I'm saying? It made me start going harder. You know what I'm saying? Like, to the point now where I'm like, I'm doing mo movies, TV shows, and radio. Now, you know, some people ask me, like, bro, how you doing radio? Bro, you was a multi-platinum artist. How you doing radio? Because I started saying to myself, I want to do something that let me make me feel free. I, I just want to do something new, try, try my hand. I tried my hand in music. I was successful. Still get paid from it. But my... My love, that internal fire for it, it's not the same for me no more. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I find myself reaching harder and, and being inspired by somebody like yourself, even though you you are still very heavy in the music and it's evident. But 
watching you come home, that focus, even like taking on the whole marriage. Yeah. It put me in a different space as a man. I said, you know what? I got to go hard. Or like you said, stay at home. Yeah. And I ain't trying to stay at home. Yeah. I'm trying to go get the bad man. So I just right. want to put that out there. That's, I'm glad I can be an inspiration to to you, Jock, and I'm glad I can be an inspiration to anybody because like, man, you got to be focused. It, the whole thing was, man, people was counting me out and people wished that I was going to, you know, people tell me like, he going to go back to jail or, you know, that's just cap or that ain't real. You know, right. so many people had so many different things to say, man. So it's like, I really had a, a point to prove too. You know, I was focused, but it's like, I got to stay out of jail, man. Everybody want me, not want me to go, but they think that I'm going to keep messing up. So they're just like, man, that, that was that fuel. Like, man, I can't do it. I can't let them see me keep messing up. I got to show people like, it's that ain't me. You know what I'm saying? Like, because people just remember that. I'm like, I don't want to be remembered for just all my, you know, mess ups. You know what I'm saying? Right. Let me clean my act together so people can celebrate. Now it's like, as soon as I did that, now they celebrate. Oh, Gucci, you didn't help so many people. You didn't did this. Look what you're doing. But before that, the whole narrative was all the mess ups. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you can't change the narrative in your life. You can't just say, hey, hey, listen, no matter what y'all thought about me yesterday, from this day forward, you know, everything stops. And it, you can just single handedly do that by yourself once you make that decision. Like, Okay, since they counted me down, let me show them now. And that, cause that's what I did. So there's a um young man named Takashi69. Maybe yeah. you've heard of him. I met Takashi before. Yeah, he's going through a lot of situations right now, and his lawyer just put out a statement saying that they're not under any circumstances going to take this plea deal, even though he says to the death of him that he was not involved whatsoever. Would you encourage or discourage that plea deal? I really, I honestly don't really know none of the facts of his situation. Honestly, but I do kind of sympathize with him in a way that because you're like, I, you know, me, me had a situation when he was locked up and everybody kind of like went to bat for him. I kind of, you know, identify more with Takashi. I got locked up and everybody say, you know, you stupid. Mm. Look at you now. Mm. So when me got out, I understand how he like prison reform. It's messed up how they did people in there. Mm. But when I got out, even though I was focused, there was a part of me be like, Damn, y'all, ain't nobody tried to help me when I got locked <laughs> up. You know <laughs> right. what I'm saying? So it was like y'all saying I was stupid. So when I got out, I had a chip. You know, so it's, it's different. Everybody's scenario is different. Yeah. So if you feel that he really didn't do it, do you think it's okay to just let the world, hey, it wasn't me. It was such and such. I, to be honest, I, I'm honest, I ain't even trying to be funny. I don't really know nothing about everything I heard. With Ken, I really don't know a lot about 6 9 I ain't okay. even act like I'm a big 6 9 fan or know his music. I ain't. I really don't know. You would have said somebody like C Murder, a pimp C, somebody who I'm listening. Yeah, I've been like, man, they need to let C Murder out. You know, I don't even really know that case, but you know, I'm just a fan of his. Right, or right, more. right. You know what I'm saying? So I really don't know. So I got a question, Gucci. What's next for Gucci? We know the music with that. You do that in your sleep. I mean, I don't. You don't drop 18 albums this year. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, you would drop, drop, dropping them things at one uh, point. You know, and I know, you know, they say if it ain't broke, don't don't fix it. Yeah. So I I, I don't expect you to stop. Or, or come off the gas on that, but like I mean, I'm ready to see you in some big screen movies. I would love to do some movies. I got, I just my book just got. Uh, I just sold the rights to my book to get turned into a movie. Oh. And um, wow. the same people who you know the production company that's putting out my movie put out American Gangster. Oh, they put out the Negotiator. They put out the Founder. The movie that that came out about Mac McDonald's. The people who really founded McDonald's. That was a little. They movie. just put out that movie. And they put out this movie called The Wrestler. So. They like um, this gonna be a this gonna be a dope movie, you know. It's like really big time coming into theater, so that's what I'm working on right now. And you know, I just signed um, Hood Rich Pablo, Asian the Doll, Model and Quill, and Z Money. So you know, I'm trying to you know um, work with them. We in the studio trying to make records. And other than that, to be honest, man, I'm just I get up every day, man. I work out, man. I try to find me something to get excited about, you know. And I just take those undertakings on and just go on. If, if it's a mixtape, if it's my video shoot, if it's a, you know, traveling, just get some recreation or get some rest. Everything I do, man, is, I kind of try to, like, think, think of it and, like, do it by the week, play it by year. Not like, right. what you going to do next year? Man, I'm trying to enjoy next year. You know. Damn right. Just, if you just keep living like that and just staying, like, focused week by week, then the whole year take care of itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> this, is, this is another one. Uh, you just mentioned your best friend. Yeah. Speaking of P, correct? Now, it's one of the moments in life when, because I was able to sit there and I watched P ask a million questions, man. 
before he got into this whole Bro, thing I of music. When we when I first like met P, he came to me. It was like doing a video for Dirty Day. You direct the video. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah that's I what I'm did saying. Everything like, under the sun. Seriously, now, he, di- he directed that video. And, I, <laughs> and that's I how sat I got there, Pete. Like, really got tight. And I sat there and I watched Pete ask so many questions because Pete really respected you. He, he was just like, "What should I do? What should I do?" And and it's so crazy because I could tell that Homer was gonna be that guy because I was like, he passionate, and I could tell he he loved the people around him. He took care of the people around him. So it's funny to see him asking you. Being the superstar that you are, and then now he's created yeah. this whole wave. Also, I, if if correct me if I'm wrong, did you have some type of involvement with introducing the Migos to P? Hundred percent. I introduced the Migos to Coach K. I introduced Coach K to P. I introduced both of them to Todd Moskowitz. It wouldn't. It ain't no doubt about it. That is. It was like, but then the day it was like, like you remember how you said you I inspired you back then. Yeah. I remember like 2000. 12 when I first met P after we started like being cool like instantly started like going out and just being British right, right right so one day he was like man we've been kicking about three four five months go up our rock with you we, we we killing everything in Atlanta he was like but every weekend some weekends you gone some weekends you ain't you supposed to be gone every weekend you go out you know what I'm saying like you need to just focus on your music when he told me that I, I left from them like my partner just told me basically that my buzz falling off I ain't I ain't popping like I used to that what he saying like you you in the city too much. That's what made me start signing everybody. Mm. After that, I signed Scooter. I tried to sign Travis Porter, Bank Road Fresh, Thug, Nego. So it's like he watched me do all that. Right. You know, but at the same time, he had a record label. And I'm like, it's my partner. He got the win. It ain't no, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm glad that I helped him out too. Right. You know what I'm saying? It worked. Yeah, when I say it worked out perfect. Because while I was gone, he can help the Migos and look what they did. They could not, it's like they needed, they needed each other. Right. That's beautiful. I'd like to say something. <laughs> Go this ahead. This is very different because I'm the producer of the show, so I never really speak. <laughs> but uh, since you were talking about it, I don't know if you remember, man, but I was in the room when you had, it was quite a few of us. And I think we were shooting, some, we were planning on shooting some videos for you, but you brought everybody in the room. You made everybody come in the room and said, look, I got these three boys. That's really gonna be the next biggest thing. And I don't know if you remember, but you played the video for us, the uh, yeah. Trap Out the Bando yeah. video for us. And I, I was looking that. around the room, and and you're like, I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all, they the next biggest thing. So I'm looking around, and everybody's kind of like, there's some people that, like, eh. oh no, people and, that everybody but, invite, everybody, right? Some people exactly. decided they went. Coach K immediately was like, they stars, you know. But all the artists that was at the Brick Factory, it's funny now, but back then they was like, them boys ain't hot. Mm. They ain't got you know. They was like, "Why you bringing them around?" But in my mind, I was like, "Shit, y'all can leave. <laughs> I'm finna keep them because I know they time. Y'all can't hate on them." And to me, it's like people never forget those moments. You never forget when someone when you came around and people didn't welcome you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then somebody went say, "Hey man, listen, I know y'all, but we finna welcome them, or y'all ain't welcome." Wow. People don't never forget that. Them right. the moments that I'm proud of. Like I know, hey, tell them that. Tell them about that. Tell them the backstory. Yeah. The backstory is always doper than the junk that people think is real. I always say that. I always say that. Just the the, the know, to be in the know. Mm-hmm. The backstory is always a blessing, man. Um, so you got the the, the concert coming up on the twenty seventh. Yes, sir. All right, now say Gucci Mane and friends. Can yeah. we like uh, who was friends? Uh, friends secret <laughs> is it a secret? Or is it gonna wait? You just gotta come see. You know I'm gonna have the whole gang now. The whole the usual suspects the okay. whole time. Okay. You know it's a it's a line of celebration. It's right after the holidays. Everybody in the city say they coming. I ain't gonna, you know, I, I gotta make it a surprise, but everybody wanna come. They like, they gonna be in town. They just wanna come out. And, you know, I definitely wanna come out and just show the city, man, how much I, you know, love them. Anytime you get to perform from Atl- for Atlanta, it's just, it ain't, it's not even work, man. Mm. Right. You know, you'll, you'll perform for Atlanta for free. Like, anybody will tell you that. It's just, it's just a different kind of feedback from yeah. people who know your songs and been knowing your songs for 10, 12 years. So, everybody coming. Yeah. That's beautiful. Can we go back to personal life, Gucci? Mm-hmm. Do you and um Keisha Kaor see any children in the future? No. No babies from you two? Y'all will make some really yeah. cute babies. Probably, but man, we we doing good, man. We just enjoying life. Sometimes you just want to enjoy your life. Yeah, because Keisha. I'm at the point now where I just want to I've been locked up for three years. I ain't even been out three years. I just wanna and I've been working the whole time on probation a lot of the time. I'm just trying to 
just just chill. <laughs> Those kids For will make you put your brains out, won't they? Not even that. It's just everything set. Everything going good. Keep it going. Keep it going. Does she ever get her feathers ruffled when she reads comments like uh, Gucci man's baby mom wants more child support? Or does she like just rub your back and ease you? I think she kind of like she had the same attitude I got. Like nothing, nothing nobody can do can hurt you. If you know you're doing something, you know it's genuine, you know it's real, then you feel like can't nobody hurt me. Mm. You know, if I'm doing something, if I wasn't doing right, then I feel like, damn, I'm insecure or something like that. But if you're doing everything right, you're like, that ain't nothing. Does, that she ain't hurt ever, me. does she ever, like, take the phone from you if she feel like maybe your baby mom is getting too crazy? No, no. My wife's so secure. And <laughs> we never argue. We never had that. We never went through that not one time. Ever, ever? We don't go through that. She's beautiful, child. Yeah, like, baby. Driven. When I say she's the most secure woman I know, never. Don't even think about it. She wouldn't even, she, she'll feel like, she wouldn't even let me see her like that. Like, you know, insecure. Mm. And she just really from a natural place. She really feel like, you know, we mature. We got a responsible relationship. You know, I respect my man. He mature. He going to handle me like a man supposed to handle a woman. And that's how we deal with each other. Oh, that's beautiful. That is. All right. Now, uh, in the news, you know, we got to get on something that's topical. A few days ago, a uh, post hit the internet. Young man who I think is, is pretty good at what he does. I think he'll be all right. In the very, I think he's gonna be okay. I think he's uh he definitely handling his business. And uh he just took it upon himself to, you know, make a self proclamation to say that he was the king of R and B. I seen that. My little homie Jacque said, said that. that. What you think about that? I'm like, why is everybody so I not not saying like why everybody in the up rug. I can understand that. But uh I don't know, I still feel like in a way, I feel like they free picking. And, what, you know, what's free picking? In, in jail, they call free picking, or in the streets, they call free picking, like you get an easy target. Oh. Yeah. Like you want to be a bully, but you're really picking people who you know ain't going to do nothing. Oh, Lord. It's like, why? if somebody else would have said that, y'all want to do that. Mm. Y'all just coming for him because, you know, y'all feel like he can't strain it or something. I don't know. Or maybe they feel like he hadn't put in enough yet to be considered yeah. as a yeah, I believe they really feel that, but it's like, damn, why y'all searching y'all feelings like that? If somebody told me they were the king of rock right now, you think I'm going to go and say something about it? <laughs> that what you supposed to feel, homie? Yeah. It's all yeah, good. True. You ain't hurt my feelings. Right. You feel like you the king of rap? I salute you. I ain't, <laughs> I ain't tripping. Tip, Tip did it. Tip said he was, I remember Tip said he was the king of the South. People was like. It ain't made me feel no different. Ross said he the biggest boss. It ain't made me feel no different. Exactly. You ask me who the king, I'm going to sound the king. Yeah. I been felt like that. Ben. Ben felt like With that. With four E's instead of not, two. No, not, I can't put one person in front of me. Not one? Hell no. Nah. I ain't finna do it because I genuinely don't believe you like think that. What if you could raise up any rapper from the dead? You would never put nobody in front of Gucci. Oh, I, 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 don't, I can't. Like, Pimp C, Easy. Come on, don't do it like that. that. Come on now, Mo. I love Easy E, and he ain't, you know, it's just um, all these people, I glorified them because I never met them. Mm, so these, like, my, you know, like Mount Rushmore. You you love EZ because you he's this legend. Mm. You love Pimp C because he's this legend. You know all these people I like listen to them like religiously. Mm. Pocket full of stones. Like we really was selling dope today. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Them was our like theme songs. Let me ask you a question. Since um you know the new single is doing great. The first time I heard it, the vibe was so crazy. Like y'all really ain't have to rap. Y'all ain't have to say nothing. To <laughs> <laughs> you go that. Uh, <laughs> and say boy, this is my boy. biggest record. This is yeah, to date or just say this is gonna be my biggest record. To oh, date? this is future, future speaking, not future the rapper, but people are speaking yeah. in future the, terms. You know, from the numbers just coming back, they're like, this might be your biggest record you ever put out. Okay, now I'm watching, and he almost looks like a protege as far as Kodak. Yeah, you know, when you see Kodak, mm -hmm. it's kind of like. Now, of course, he 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 a little younger. He you mm -hmm. know he mm -hmm. got his little how, his vibe how he moved. How does Gucci talk to a Kodak when he see him like, hey, boy, you you boy, you, boy, you you own fire now. You yeah. finna. And I see a lot of myself in Kodak. He remind me a lot of, you know, I guess like the old Gucci. I guess you right. know what I'm saying. For us, like the way he make hit records effortlessly. I used to make so many songs that just get in the radio. 
just in the studio vibing, you know, in my zone, and like a magical song will come out. And I feel like that's how Kodak recording process is, you know. Just everything he making, it just, just sounds good. His voice real good with the beat. He find the pocket real good. And I feel like, as far as that, we got a lot in style, you know, a lot mm -hmm. in common. But um, as far as, you know, like reaching out to him, when I do talk to him, it's almost just like, just let somebody know that you there for them and their line, their line of communication is open. You know, I feel like my part, you my part, if you come around, you got to come around and actually tell me what to do. But just come around. Now, if you come around, if I got something in my mind, I'm you know, then if I feel like I want to share that to you, then I go to you, then you come at me with the good advice. Right. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, just call and check on me. Just text me and say, what's up? You know, that's the start. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I feel like we didn't did that start. So me and Jock were sitting here a little bit earlier, and he was showing me some Instagram posts about all these different dudes with these colorful beads on their neck. And then we heard you refer to it in your song, something about snatching souls. Why? Why are these guys wearing beads and doing seances and stuff? It's that's deep. I I kind of like don't want to speak on it. That's yeah. what I was trying to explain to Mo because I was I, what happened was she saw me looking through uh, different posts and I got a, a couple homies, even some family members, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I was I was just trying to see where her and my producer were as far as they mindset on the streets and what's really it, going on out here. This my I ain't mean to cut y'all job, but this is my best way to describe. It's kind of like with the with the Mexican drug trafficking. They how they kind of like praise these angels or these saints because like the church kind of shut the door on them. I got partners. I feel like this is my theory that you know they got so much stuff going on in the streets that you got to have some kind of faith in something. Mm. You want something to feel like you know you ever been in a situation like I've been in a situation where I can't do nothing but go to the Bible because it really ain't nobody else to help me. My mama can't help me. My wife can't help me. It's just like one of the situations where I kind of need some reinforcement to keep me strong just to keep going. And I feel like, you know, people in the streets need that too. So they reach out to, you know, wherever they can get it from. Anybody who can make them feel okay, you know what I'm saying? Whatever kind of ritual you can do to just make me feel calm, mm. I'm down with it. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that, it kind of scared me when I saw, like, chickens and stuff, and they were, like, pluck. I was it's like, what different. the hell is going it's on? Different. <laughs> it's different. It's different. It's, it's supposed to be a way to uh, speak with the ancestors. That's what they say, but, I mean, again, it's something that I don't know anything about. Cause I'm I Muslim. feel like our religions got some kind of, like, uh, what you call it, um, practices and, you know, like I yeah. say, look, things that they do to make everybody feel good. What's the difference? It's all kind of like a routine and a and the thing, all it is, it just, it just make you put you in a mood. Right. right, right. Even if it's a mood to say, hey, man, you know, uh, I'm mournful right now. Mm -hmm. I need to get back up. Or I'm mad, cool me down. Or I'm fresh, great, I don't got no answer. Just like fasting. People don't know what to do. They fast and they feel like it come with the answer. True. You just need, yeah. you know, it's like kind of, you kind of need something, man. When you don't got nothing, you try to, you try to pull from anywhere. I'm just waiting to see you start speaking at universities, bro. Because you, 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 so your vocabulary is good. Lord have mercy. And I, me speak at a university, that'll be dope. It's, I would love to. Nah, do it. I think it's. You I should. think it's time. I think it's time. I think it's time to go up. Like real talk. I'm, I'm hearing you talk. Um, your energy is positive. You got good vibe going, man. And with you having a type of success and the knowledge of 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 your field of profession, I just feel like you could share more of you. Outside of music and rap, just just hearing you speak, bro, I'm very happy that you you've become the man you've become. Thank you know, it's already Appreciate destined to be however people want to see it, man. I, and I'm 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 like really really happy to see, cause I'm sitting over here. I'm like, well, damn, like you ain't every answer that you every question that you've answered or every time you've spoken, you said something. Where I could be like a hundred percent, I agree. And I I, I just want to keep you, you know, what I'm saying, Appreciate keep you in that, my bro. prayers, brother. I, I appreciate that. I would I would love to. You know, speak to whoever want to, you know, chop it up with me if I can help somebody. But, man, you wouldn't even believe how many times people said, like, honestly. I had to just say, listen, I don't think you should go to no school. I wouldn't want you talking to my child. Oh, Lord. So, like, shit like that rang in your head. Well. Like, you saying so, then it's like, then you did, you know, I'm not saying, even though that's in the past, you just, when you go to a school and be like, why you go to that school? Then nobody want you to go talk to them students. Mm. You know, like a real day. Mm. Why would you go there? Mm. Like. Dude, why y'all let that felon into y'all school? You know, so why y'all let that murderer into y'all school? But guess what? Again, straight said it like that. Those parents said. And again, that's why I said colleges. 
where 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 you at a where, where these people are at a certain age yeah. where they can decipher right. the difference. That they would be they, dope. They could see the entertainment side of things, but then they can also see the businessman, not just your 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 faults and your flaws. The businessman, the the better person that you become. You know what I'm saying? It's just the game you spin. I think yeah. I think that's what people are missing. Our coach be missing that sometimes because usually the cats who got the game for us sometimes. It's like they talk at us. It's like preachers right, trying bro. to talk. Because even now, you. like, people, I feel like, bro, that's why all the young kids rock with me so hard. Because it's like, damn, Gucci. Not saying people, I ain't the only person, but I'm like, damn, Gucci don't judge me. Because I kind of sympathize with them. Because I was like that. Yeah. Like, it took me to mature. I didn't have the skill set. I didn't know. I was not even like nobody taught me. I just went to experience. Yeah. So, you know, if you if you doing drugs all the time, I didn't know doing drugs all the time. And, you know, I didn't put two and two together like, damn, that is why kind of my business is not on point like it is because a lot of time I'm doing too much uh, recreation, extracurricular activity. Right. I need to be focused on my business. I got an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Don't take it for granted. But I ain't know I'm squandering my opportunity or I'm being disrespectful mm -hmm. or, you know, not taking it for, uh, you know, not appreciating it by doing these things. But now I look at it and I have no notion like, what you mean you go to the radio station? What you mean you missed the show? Mm -hmm. What you mean you ain't on time? Like, bro, you got a, this an opportunity, it's a blessing. Do you know your partner ain't got no money? You see, your partner's struggling trying to make a livelihood. This show break. You know, don't let it go. Like you said, when Josh said what he's doing now, you blessed. But to be rapping from now, to be doing this, to doing that, you blessed. That's a job. That's a livelihood. That's a career. Yeah. You know, I don't think, you know, back then I understood, like, I think I felt like I took, you know, a poster came to me. Right. I was entitled. Right. Mm -hmm. You know. Then you got home. Yep. All the young people kind of entitled right now. You know, they feel like, I supposed to do this. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to jump in this car. I'm going to drive how I want. I ain't going to get pulled over. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to rip the car. You know <laughs> That's what how we I'm all think the jury. Ain't nobody going to hey, step to me with the jury. Why do that? Like, because you, <laughs> it's, you young. It ain't even like, see, like you're saying, like talking down to them. I don't talk at them. Mm. I understand. I used to do it too. Ain't nobody going to bother me. Nobody going to mess with me. Ain't nobody going to pull me over. Mm. Why you acting? You know, it's like, and then if anybody was trying to tell me, it was like, why do come around me being so stiff? He need not come around if he don't want to, you know. He know ain't never, you know. It's gangster this way. Why he come over here then? You know, for real. Like, even my partner, P.J., be like, hey, man, don't bring it in my car. Mm. Telling you now, you need to follow me if you're going to do that. Yeah. I'm like, why you? Why you so corny? You know, and that was just, <laughs> and you got to think about it. That was on, I was yeah. 31, 32 then, yeah. you know. But in my mind, he was saying, you know, I had, I ain't got time for that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, you, you live and you learn, man. So you just um, spoke about your mom and um, your wife when you were speaking about the only two people pretty much you could go to when something is really heavy on your head when we were talking about the whole beat situation. And I wasn't going to ask this question, but it really made me wonder when your alleged brother came out and said that they weren't invited to the wedding, like, was he speaking facts or was he just trying to, like, what was going on with that situation? Listen, he just, he spoke what is on his mind. To be honest, man, I'm gonna be real with you. I my daddy Gucci man, I'm Gucci man really junior. I got brothers on the west side I met three, four times. Wow. A couple of them, it's just that's how my family is. So all my brothers I'm not close to. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I, you know, what can I say? We folks had kids everywhere. But me and my, you know, me and my immediate brothers, we just were tighter. But I got brothers that I just ain't really, I just never had a chance to meet them. So never had a really chance to get to build no bond with them. When he said um, his mom, he meant his mom, not your mom. I didn't even hear that. To be honest, I don't even, I didn't hear it. I heard of it, but I didn't hear it like verbatim, so I can't say what he said. But your mom was definitely at your wedding. No, she was not. She didn't? Why not? She just didn't attend. Was she invited? I just don't want to, it's really no, nobody's business about, you know, some shit like that. So it's family matters. 100%. Cool. Couldn't have said it no better. Guwap, new album, Evil Genius out right now, all platforms. The Christmas, oh, we can't call it that. Cause I'm looking at the promo on it. I see the ugly Christmas sweater. I got it. I still got it. Look, look. I have a Gucci Christmas sweater <laughs> in my closet. We got them. Thank you. Thank you, Yance. <laughs> I have one. <laughs> Appreciate that, Yance. We got the, uh, and I'm going to tell you what's funny. It's been so many cold days, bro. We, we passed it now. There's been so many cold days where I was like, man, I'm just going to throw something on. I look at the sweater, I'm like, <laughs> damn, bro, if I throw this sweater on, how I'm going to look? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, mean, I, have, I got some Tims with the same colors in the sweater. I'm like, but it's a kill this shit, man. Y'all, listen, listen what I tell you. <laughs>
I'm like, damn. I'm standing myself. I'm like, man. First thing I do, I gotta go in here. I got a little. I got to tell job, man. You know, I'm glad that's in the past, bro. Let's get yeah. past that. No, uh, past it. It's really? already done. It's in done, man. We had it for a minute. Cause I already know. Cause I'd be like, look, man. Don't. Look, Shawty, look, Shawty got one. You know, Shawty, Shawty. Yeah. Mo got one. And like we going to this Christmas party. Yeah, we finna party. Shout out like he was excited. We finna party. Hell, I got him a sweater. Boy, chop. But you need the boy. He was like, boy, you need the jet. Boy, you need. Oh, you need to bust it down with this and that. And I was like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all make him cry. <laughs> but it's a good thing, man. Eight times you just tuning in, man. Uh, the streets morning take over live this morning. Gucci, Gucci man in the building. The new album Evil Genius out on all platforms. Make sure you are in attendance for the Christmas party. Is it a title for the Christmas party? Um, Gucci, Man and, Gucci friends? and Friends. But look, before we go, Joe, I want to just have a chance to say this real quick. Okay. To 945 and, you know what I'm saying, all the listeners, the whole town, you know, I want to thank 945, man, because, you know, from the day this station was invented and came in, bro, they've been going bananas on Gucci, man, from day one. So I just want to say, you know, like I appreciate that. Even when I was locked up, that was keeping my records going. So I feel like, you know, I got – I got Atlanta, Atlanta radio, and I'm, like, proud of that. Even when I talk to the label, I be like, I got Atlanta radio in the blunder. They love me. It's, like, something that I got in my pocket that I appreciate. So, it's, like, that's such a great tool. And the whole city of Atlanta, man, thank y'all, man, for supporting me. Man, I've been – my first album came out in 2005. And, you know, every time I drop, man, you know, Atlanta just totally go by everything that I put out. And I appreciate it. That's what's up. We love you, too, Gucci. Love y'all back. That's what's up. We definitely will be in attendance at the uh, Gucci and Friends concert. What's that? The Fox, right? It's at the Fox. Yep. Oh, December yeah. December 27th. That's going to be crazy. Make sure y'all uh, keep Bring all here. your ice. It's going to be cold. Bring all your furs. <laughs> like, this is going to be a stunner fish. Like, don't come playing no games. You got to be dead fresh. You got to bring all your jewelry. You got to you gotta show out. You just, it's Christmas was uh, two days before, so you ain't no, ain't no excuse for you not to be fresh. You're no right excuses. now. You got the criminal no clothes. Excuse, got the criminal jewelry. Exactly. <laughs> Some folks be trying to put their criminal clothes on, on criminal. Just hold on. Save wait. two days. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, that is, man. We appreciate you, bro. Man, appreciate y'all, bro. And that is. Thank you.